Finally, we come to our main event. John Cena defends his WWE title against Ted DiBiase Jr. with the entire roster of Raw banned from ringside. This is a solid 30 minutes of back and forth action. Most people cheer for Cena, but there are a few people that cheer when Ted gets the upper hand. After a series of near falls, the crowd is on the edge of their seat, convinced that Ted might just win. The end sees John pick up the win, though, and while some of the crowd cheers, there are a lot of people booing the no title change. John waits for Ted to get up, and then they shake hands again, and Ted holds up Cena's arm. I thought about using someone from SmackDown to interfere, but I figured I had enough interference in this show, and there really isn't any way to take advantage of that, so I just left it be. But I bet I had you going for a few minutes. Now I'm looking at the November 24th edition of ECW. William Regal opens up the show with the title as the crowd boo. He says that the reign of Regal has begun and no one will dethrone him. Christian comes out and demands a rematch tonight. The general manager Tiffany comes out and says that that's a great idea. In addition, she's going to start a mini tournament to decide who the number one contender will be. Two matches tonight with the winners going to the finals next week. And the number one contender will face the winner of the title match tonight at TLC. She says that all the participants will be wrestlers who haven't been ECW champions yet, and it starts next. The first match of the night is Yoshi Tatsu taking on Paul Burchill in the first of two semifinal matches to determine the number one contender. This is a good 10 minute match that sees Paul go over and advance to the finals. After that we have the Abraham Wilson Show. This is a 10 minute segment. With Hurricane as the guest, Abe makes fun of him, calling him a comic book geek, and asks what his superpowers are. Losing? Hurricane says that Abe must be blind because he's won the last two matches. Abe starts to say something, but Vladimir Kozlov and Ezekiel Jackson come out and attack Hurricane, upturning furniture as Abe beats a hasty retreat. Tommy Dreamer comes running out to the cheer of the crowd, but gets beat down as well. Ezekiel and Vladimir leave having done their work. The next match is Shelton Benjamin going over Zack Ryder in the second semifinal match to determine the number one contender. That means that Shelton Benjamin will face Paul Burchill next week. Finally, we come to the main event, Christian taking on William Regal in a title rematch from Survivor Series. This is a good back and forth 15 minute match that sees Christian come close to regaining the title but Regal retains. Now I'm looking at the November 27th edition of SmackDown. Teddy Long opens up SmackDown saying he's got an exciting announcement for the upcoming TLC pay-per-view. The Intercontinental title will be on the line at the pay-per-view in a TLC match. Jericho comes out and says that since he's lost 500 pounds, he's going to set his sights on the world title, but in the meantime, he's going to prove his worth by entering Teddy's little contest. Teddy says it's not going to be that easy. Tonight there will be three qualifying matches. The winners get in. Jericho says this is going to be a breeze, but Teddy is all smiles. I'm glad to hear that, player, because your match is first, and the man you'll be facing loves to fight. Yes, the first match of the night is Chris Jericho taking on Finley. This is a good 10-minute match that sees Jericho narrowly pick up the victory. CM Punk is walking into the stadium backstage when Kane stops him. He wants to know why Punk has been dodging his calls all week. Punk tries to play it off, saying he's been super busy, but Kane isn't buying it. Kane says he expects to be paid. After all, that's the only reason he joined Punk's team at Survivor Series. Punk says give him a minute to get situated and he'll come pay Kane. The next match is Jimmy Wang Yang and Slim Master J taking on Mike Knox and a newly repackaged Luke Gallows. He makes his debut teaming up with Knox to make short work of their opponents. Vicky Guerrero is backstage with Eric Escobar. He's pleading with her to take him back and forgive him. She says he has one last chance. She secured him a match next against John Morrison for entry into the TLC match. She says if he loses, to not even bother coming back. 
He says he won't fail her and leaves. Then there's a knock at the door and Drew McIntyre enters. He says, you called for me? To which Vicky responds, I have a proposition for you as we go to commercial. The next match is Eric Escobar taking on John Morrison. It's a solid 15 minute match, but ultimately John picks up the victory and Eric is aghast that he and Vicky are no more. Kane is in the back looking for Punk when he gets hit from behind by Batista. Dave starts laying into him and when Kane falls, Batista continues to kick at him. Then off camera, someone says, enough. Punk comes on screen and crouches down next to Kane laughing. Paid in full, Kane. Then he walks away while handing Batista an envelope. Mickey James is backstage when Dolph Ziggler stops by and wishes her luck in her match next. She apprehensively thanks him, but Dolph lingers. She asks if she can help him with something. He responds by saying that he's noticed that she and Morrison have gotten a bit chummy lately. Not that it's any of your business, but what of it? He says that Morrison's a sinking ship and he'll prove it come TLC. He goes on to say that she should date a real man. Mickey starts to laugh and says, who? You? Didn't we already have this conversation a few weeks ago? His smarmy smile vanishes and he says he didn't have the title at the time. Now he does. Mickey says that may have changed, but her feelings haven't. Dolph goes to hit her, but pauses and says, John Morrison won't always be around to save you. Moments like now. But he says that he's giving her a free pass this time. She pushes past him, and he smiles as he watches her go. The next match is Mickey James taking on Michelle McCool. A decent 10-minute match that sees Michelle start off strong due to Mickey being distracted by what happened previously. But soon she gets back into the swing of things and by the end the crowd cheers as she pins a shocked Michelle. Matt Hardy is talking to Teddy Long in his office when Kane comes barging in yelling that he wants Punk tonight in a match. Instead, Teddy offers Kane a counter match. If Kane can find a partner, he can face both men tonight in a tag team match. Kane looks to Matt, but Matt can't believe Kane has the audacity to look to him when just a week prior, they were on opposite sides. Kane says that things have changed, and while they'll never be friends, can they at least be temporary partners? Matt thinks for a moment, and then agrees, but warns Kane not to do anything rash that would get them disqualified. Kane towers over Matt and says he'll do whatever it takes to gain his revenge and to not get in his way, and then leaves. Matt looks at Teddy and says that this partnership is off to a great start. R-Truth takes on Drew McIntyre in another TLC qualifier. This is another good 15 minute match that sees Drew get the pin and progress to the TLC pay-per-view. Finally, we come to the main event. Batista and CM Punk take on Kane and Matt Hardy. During the match, Kane is quick to attack and makes foolish mistakes in his quest for revenge against both men, allowing his opponents to keep the upper hand. Punk and Dave also pull a lot of the usual underhanded tactics. Matt offers to tag in at times, but Kane refuses, trying to gain the upper hand by himself. Of course, it doesn't work, and he eventually falls to Batista. The crowd boo! as Batista and Punk start to beat on Kane, even though they've won. Matt comes in and attacks Punk, sending them both over the top ropes, leaving Batista and Kane in the ring. Things dramatically change when a bell tolls, and Batista's smile fades. The lights go out, and when they come back up, Undertaker is standing in the ring, staring Batista down. Dave goes to attack him, but Taker counters and gives Batista a choke slam. Taker stands over, Batista holds the title up, and looks over at his fallen brother as we go off the air.